So, you just bought a Nintendo Switch. Congrats! But what do you do with this mysterious thing? Wing it at a neighbor and run? Ugh. Mix it into a quiche? No, it is, in fact, a video game system. It would absolutely ruin your quiche, but it is a good one at the playing of the video games. I'm gonna talk you through how to get the most out of your mysterious new toy right now. I'm Andrew from Apt, and this is the Nintendo Switch. If you bought this for yourself, or you bought the version with an OLED screen, or the Switch Lite, and you wanna know what games to play, or you bought this as a gift and wanna know what else to buy to make little Timmy happy when he opens this on a magical holiday morning. God bless us, everyone. We've got you covered, even if your relative's name is not, in fact, Timmy. I'm also gonna briefly touch on the different versions of the Switch in case you're still shopping and strongly considering it, but only briefly, this video is mostly for you, Switch owner. We're covering setup, accessories, games, services. We'll sort of move through levels of Switch owner with the very basics up front, some medium stuff with accessories, to let myself rant about my favorite games and stuff off the beaten path later on. Check out the time codes below if you don't need the full rundown but want specific insight into any of those categories. Let's start with the basics. No judgment. Maybe you have no idea what a video game is, but your child has put this at the top of their wish list for years. The Switch is a popular video game console from the legendary game studio, Nintendo. You can connect the Switch to the internet to download games or buy a physical copy of a game and put it into the console right here. The unique twist with the Switch is that you can play it as a handheld device on your lap so you can take it with you on a plane trip or you can put it into its included dock and play your game of choice on the big screen TV. And in fact, the transition is seamless. So you can come home from that play trip, put the switch into your dock, but you know, right side facing forward. And while you flip on the TV, it loads up and you pick right back up where you left off when the flight attendant so rudely insisted that you leave your seat Despite the fact that you were this close to beating the boss, I'm not bitter, it's fine. Before I get too much further, I need to talk a bit about the different versions. Cause maybe you haven't actually pulled the trigger yet and you need to know which one to get. But I'm going to challenge myself to tell you everything you need to know in 60 seconds or less unscripted. This is a segment we call Briefly Before You Buy. 60 seconds on the clock. Prince, you ready? Get set, go. Okay, so there's three versions, the Switch Lite, the Switch Original, we'll call it Switch Vanilla, and the Switch OLED. $200 for the Lite, $300 for the Switch Vanilla, $350 for the Switch OLED. The biggest difference with the Lite is the fact that it's portable only. You can't actually attach it to a TV into a dock. It doesn't have a dock, it won't fit into existing docks. So if you need that portable only console and you really don't want it on your big screen TV, you can save yourself a hundred bucks. It can play almost all the same games. The other real disadvantage is that you can't attach other joy cons to it but you can use pro controllers with the original switch and the switch oled the difference between the two is much more subtle it's really just that nicer screen on the oled and the fact that the oled has that much more memory so if you're deciding between the three the oled is going to be the choice if you use it both handheld and on the tv a lot the switch is the best choice if you want it just on the tv and the switch light if you want to save the money and you really don't want it on your big screen tv whoo done now that you have your switch in hand, let's talk setup. It's so easy, like flipping a switch. <laughs> Get it? Because I don't. I'm lost. All right, setup. So the switch light here is going to be a little different than the other two. You're going to want to get all three charged right away. With the switch light, plug the adapter into the wall and plug the other end into the USB-C connector on the bottom of the console. 
You'll need to do the same thing to get charging on the Nintendo Switch OLED and the vanilla Switch. Again, just plug it into the wall and into the USB-C connector down here. I know what you really wanna do is get your Switch hooked up to the big screen TV, but the Switch wants you to go through the setup process a little bit first. So plug it in and then you're gonna to need to attach the Joy-Cons with these. These guys just slide in down the side like that. And then the switch is gonna walk you through picking your language, setting up Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can get it set up on the big screen TV. To do that, you need the dock. The dock will keep charging it, so don't worry about getting the battery all the way to 100%. Flip the dock around, pull the panel off, or sometimes it just pivots down, and there you'll find the spot where you plug in your AC adapter and your HDMI cord, and we'll get it set up right now. Notice the dock has a little slot here that the cords can go in, and then, so we get it plugged in, and then you can put the panel back on and then get these cords arranged all nicely. And then to get it in here, all you do is plop it in and the switch will pull up on the big screen TV and then you're away. And speaking of getting your switch on the TV, let's take a tour of what it's like once it is actually on. Once you finish the setup process, get the switch in your dock, voila, it's on the big screen TV. Now. If you wanted to change any settings like parental controls, you move to a different place, you need to reset up Wi-Fi, system settings is right here, and you can find just about everything, including there's parental controls. If you need to add more users to your switch, and then you hit the little home button, boom, you're right back there. Now, the one difference you might notice between my switch and yours, if you've just bought it, I got a bunch of games on there. Where do you get those? You come down here, to the Nintendo eShop and you go on that and you'll be able to, again, select your profile and it'll pull up a selection. You can search through games at when it does load. And then again, you find the one you want and you get it down on here and then you'll be able to play it. This home button should always bring you back to that main menu. The Switch Online is where you access services like playing games with friends and a friend list. Uh, news is always very useful to keep up with what Nintendo has to say. And then actually there is a button on here to take screenshots and record footage, which you can find there, uh, setting up and syncing controllers. But otherwise, you can switch between users up here. You have your games here. You jump in at any point. You can hit the options button on a game if you wanna make sure it's up to date or if you ever are done with a game and want to get it off of there, if you've bought the game from the eShop, you can always re-download it after you delete it here. So you have all of your options here to find the games you want to play and jump right in. Now, you might ask, is that it? Is that all I need to know? I'm so happy you asked telepathically the way you do. Let's talk accessories. To me, there is only one no-brainer accessory for the Switch, and it might not be the one you think of first. It's a case. You can get by with just the Joy-Cons for a bit, but the appeal of the Switch is portability. Take it with you on a nice day when you're on a stroll to the park so you can log outdoor hours without actually doing something so extreme as enjoying nature. I mentioned taking it with you while you travel, but the more you use the Switch to its potential by bringing it with you, the more you expose yourself to something like this happening. Oh no, my Switch, no! Anyway, a case can help protect it and a screen protector is a good idea too. Fortunately, you can usually find the two as a package deal. This is a good thing to get, especially if you're getting the Switch as a gift. Think of it as minor gift insurance to protect the cool thing from your clumsy relative. You know the relative I'm talking about. And they're definitely gonna wanna play with it when you get together on the holidays, even if the person you gave it to is generally super careful, get a case. Number two, maybe an extra power cord for traveling? An extra first party option is simply called the Nintendo Switch AC adapter. You don't wanna yank the cord from the base station every time you take a trip if you travel a lot. 
The Switch does have a USB-C port, which is common, so you could just use your phone charger. But the phone charger probably won't have the same power rating, so it'll likely charge slowly. And Nintendo definitely doesn't want you to do this. Different chargers use different amperages, and there's a small chance you could brick your console with a different charger because of those different power levels. The percentage chance of your console bricking is small, but anything above zero is probably not acceptable to some, and I get it. So, consider the charger for traveling. I have one, though the battery on the Switch is good enough that you likely won't need it for day trips. Number three, yeah, get a Pro Controller, probably. Another one that isn't definite, and maybe you can get this one later if you decide you need the upgrade. So, out of the box, these Joy-Cons function as controllers, and they work fine. In handheld mode, this is the choice. Even when you have the Switch in the base station, you can pull out the Joy-Cons and put them into this little included frame, boom! You have something that feels like an ordinary controller. Or, if you have multiple people that want to play, each person just takes one, and you turn it on its side and attach the handle, and boom, now there are two controllers. If you have four people that want to play, you can just get more Joy-Cons. Or, if you mostly want to play on your TV and you want something with a little less jank than this, the Pro Controller is a good option. Plus, buying one comes with a free compliment. Use this just once, you're a pro, just like that. They couldn't call it the Pro Controller otherwise. Also, this is just way better for people with big hands than the Joy-Cons. Extra Joy-Cons won't sync with the Switch Lite, but the Pro will. And honestly, the Pro Controller is a good controller. It's comfortable to hold for a while, great battery life, great connectivity. It's generally considered a top-end controller, and you know that compliment. One last quick one to keep in mind, a memory card. If you're gonna be downloading a lot of games, the memory of the Switch can fill up pretty quickly. Bear in mind here, you get what you pay for to an extent. You want a memory card with quick transfer speeds if you wanna play a game directly off of the card instead of transferring it to the console first, which might defeat the purpose of the memory card. Now, what are you actually gonna use the Pro Controller for? That's right, games. The good stuff, finally. Yes, I put this section down a bit, but mostly because this is my favorite stuff to talk about, and I wanted to get the veggies out of the way, and now, dessert, games. Breath of the Wild, sweet Jiminy Cricket Breath of the Wild. If you want one game to give alongside the Switch as a gift and you don't want to think too much more about it, give a game called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It is, to quote Socrates here, just a really great video game and that Socrates knows his stuff. Like honestly, probably one of the best open world adventure games of all time. Zelda is one of Nintendo's longest running franchises, but you don't need to know the series at all to play and enjoy this one. Just start it up, go exploring and enjoy the adventure. But it is a single player only game. If your gift recipient, your child or your spouse or your mailman, what have you, if they prefer multiplayer games, go with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The first is a fighting game with a big roster of fan favorite characters, but fighting in a fun, cartoony way so you don't have to worry about violence in any real sense. The second is the latest iteration of the classic racing franchise, and it's packed with cool characters and courses. For cooperative games, where you play together on the same team, check out Overcooked 2. Though the first is good as well and also available for the Switch, you need to work together to keep up with the food orders from your customers in a cartoony restaurant and it is chaotic and a ton of fun. Uh, Rayman Legends is another one here if you prefer a co-op game. Here you can run, jump, and punch your way through levels. You have plenty of other obvious choices for games. Yes, Minecraft and Fortnite are available for the Switch. 
other Nintendo properties have great games on the Switch too. Super Mario Odyssey, fantastic. Metroid Dread is cool and atmospheric and tough. Luigi's Mansion 3, if you want a spooky ghost busting game. And Animal Crossing New Horizons is just an extremely popular social simulation game where you can customize your own island and interact with cute anthropomorphic animals, because why not? But I want to wrap up this section on games with some less obvious stuff. If you're buying the Switch as a gift, pick one of the games I already mentioned. They're more recognizable and will thus lead to more happy dances when open. But if you're buying the Switch for yourself and you want to venture outside the beaten path, <laughs> oh boy. It's time for a segment called Andrew's Happy Rants. And it is what it sounds like. The Switch is a great platform for indie games. I didn't expect that going in. I really just bought mine so I could play Breath of the Wild, but my goodness, the past couple of Nintendo consoles have leaned almost entirely on first party Nintendo stuff like Zelda and Mario. And Nintendo has plenty of properties, so that was enough for fans. But the Switch, it's getting great independent games before PlayStation and Xbox. Let me talk about some. Neon White. It's new this year. It's a first person shooter platformer speedrunner thing. It's hard to explain, but it's awesome. You do shoot things, but it's more of a puzzle, figuring out how to get through the level as quickly and efficiently as possible and after a little practice you'll be flying through and pulling off absolutely sweet stunts on the regular it's got a little bit of a cringy story but whatever the gameplay loop is sick citizen sleeper another one that's new this year you're a dying robot on a space station just trying to get by get to know people make hard choices that affect the safety of you and those around you in this dystopian society where you're really just trying to make ends meet simple gameplay organized around regular six-sided die amazing experience return of the Obra Dinn. This isn't exclusive, worth checking out regardless. It's the best modern detective game out there, period. You have to find out what happened to the crew of this derelict ship, and the mystery is really compelling, and the game actually asks you to make deductions in a really clever way. <laughs> the game is sweet, and those, those are just my favorites. Maybe you haven't heard of those, even if you follow games. The rest are back in the mainstream, at least as far as indie games are concerned. If you want an action-packed game with a nice dose of challenge, check out Hollow Knight Hades. Hollow Knight has an amazing atmosphere, Hades, really good story. If you like platforming, you know, jumping from narrow ledge to narrow ledge like the old school Mario games, but those didn't kick your butt enough, Celeste. For well-written games, good story. Disco Elysium, Undertale, Divinity Original Sin 2. The last one is one of the best Dungeons & Dragons-esque role-playing games of this generation, and it's fully cooperative. And if you want more stuff to make your brain hurt, check out Into the Breach or Baba Is You. The first for turn-based puzzly combat, and the second for simple but devious puzzles. End of rant. <laughs> and good news, I've barely scratched the surface of great games you can play on this cool device. These are just some of my favorites. But before we wrap up, let's touch on services. Do you need to pay for the online service on your Nintendo Switch? No. The Switch shines more as a let me invite folks over to play some games at my place device instead of a let's log on and play online shooters with strangers device. Now, Nintendo probably recognizes that and the base subscription cost for online multiplayer is a fraction of the other guys. Just $4 a month or 20 for the year at base level with add-ons available for family members or some extra retro games. So sure, fine. If you wanna play Mario Kart to keep in touch with distant friends and family, why not? The finer details. The basic online service lets you save games to the cloud, play games with friends online, and play some old school games from the original Nintendo and Super Nintendo consoles. If you have multiple people in the household, a family membership is $35 a year for up to eight different accounts. Or you can do the Switch Online plus the expansion pack. That is 12 months for 50 bucks and gets you access to a catalog of games from the N64 era and access to extra content for popular titles like Mario Kart 8 and Animal Crossing. There's a family option for that one too, 80 a year, also for up to eight people. Just know that you can't actually voice chat on the Switch itself. Outside of games like Fortnite, which have voice chat built in, that's something. 
Nintendo wants you to use their app for voice chat. But if you are pulling out your phone to talk to someone while playing a game, I mean, at that point you have other options. You know what I mean? So, no, the online service isn't great, though it does give you access to some classic games and it isn't that expensive. So I guess there are worse things like mushrooms. Mushrooms are an evil, terrible food and you can't convince me otherwise. But you could convince me easily, I might add, to play games that you recommend. Comment below to let me know of your favorites that I forgot or hit me up with questions. If you're new to this or gifting this, I'm seriously happy to help answer anything that I brushed over in the video. In return, if you wouldn't mind, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. It's a brand new channel. Carl and I work for an electronic store called Apt in Illinois. We've been doing this electronic stuff for a bit in one way or another, and we want to use our expertise and the expertise of the many longtime pros here to help you get the most out of your gadgets. We have links below to our store and some of the extras and games I recommended. And if you want to buy stuff, awesome. That does help us, but really, we're here to help you. So ask questions and stay tuned. Lots more to come here. Thank you very much for watching. Happy gaming.